Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern, 912-638-9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, h and &H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, h, h has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. h, &H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights! the game but you don't love the pain from the moment an injury sidelines you turn to the experts at summit sports medicine and orthopedic surgery our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely to play your best you need to work with the best visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. Coming to you live from the Richard Holt Sports Center in St. Simons, Georgia. It is the 3A GISA semifinal as Federica takes on Tiff Area here tonight from St. Simons, Georgia. Hi, everybody. I'm Matt Fargo alongside Brandon Beal as we get you ready for tonight's semifinal between the Knights and the Panthers. And this one is going to be a good one as these two teams meet for the second time in this season. Brandon, I'm excited. Yeah, the first game was a great game, and we're looking forward to uh, Thomasville, as you see on the screen there, Frederica's quarterback, uh, having a great season. Uh, you know, they want to avenge that loss they had 21-18 over in Tifton. Yeah, both of these teams are on revenge tours, beating teams that previously had beaten them earlier in this season. And of course, Frederica can do that again tonight, uh, revenging their loss earlier from Tift area. You see Thomas Veal there, 60% of his tosses he has completed this season, 935 yards, nine touchdowns, and he's completed touchdown passes, four different receivers catching touchdown passes, since uh, and six of them catching seven or more uh, passes this season. So we expect Veal, when he does put the ball in the air, to get it to his playmakers. And one of them, you're looking at him, Kyle Perez, after the injury back on November 20th. And now he is a part of this now two-headed running attack that the Knights now have. 
Absolutely. You know, Kyle's got some extra motivation. This is the game that uh, he got hurt in over in Tifton, and he's out until you, you said November 20th. So a senior running back's got a lot to prove along with uh, the Frederica team. All right, there's the one head of the running back uh, tandem. There's the second one, Jordan Triplett, Mr. Freshman, who has been so impressive this season. In fact, Max Preps ranks him the number one freshman running back in the nation and third among running backs in the state of Georgia. 1,704 yards on the season, 21 touchdowns, and we expect big things from him. Boy, as he caught the seat on fire for the Knights and the country this year. And then on the other side of the football, we're taking a look at quarterback Dylan Harbord. He's the guy that toted the rock and was really impressive in their win against the Knights earlier this season. In fact, he was able to throw 12 of his 22 passes for 212 yards and three touchdowns, only through the one interception. But he also rushed 14 times for 72 yards in that win. He will definitely be the key for Tift area coming into tonight's game and uh, the other guy that's going to need to stay step up is Mason Tyler a wide receiver running back now because more running backs and you know this has kind of been a mash episode for Tift area much of this season uh, they've had as many as five key players out and another one Cameron Brown is out so it will be Tyler Mason needing to step up in the running back position moving from wide receiver to running back and that's uh, a tall order to do in a state semifinal. All right, when we come back, there's the players. Let's put them between the white lines and get you ready for an all-expensive paid trip to the state championship at Mercer University. When we come back, it is Frederica and Tiff area. Kick around, kick off, moments away. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern. 912-638-9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, H&H &H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, H&H &H has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. H&H &H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights! the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad 
alongside an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. And we welcome you back inside Orchard Hole Sports Center in Simon's Island as we get you ready for kickoff between Frederica and Gift Area. Gearing up these two teams. I mentioned the revenge tours of these two teams that both have. The Knights took down Bullock Academy last week, 34-27, a team who had previously beat them in the regular season. And then Gift Area did the same thing. They beat Pinewood Christian 28-7 last week. But it is the Knights with the opportunity to get more revenge. And losing that game, we mentioned 21 to 18 in the third game of the season. But the second time around for the Knights, it's for that state championship appearance, trying to get back yet again for Frederica. Exciting times, Brendan. This is exciting. I've got the uh, team walking out right under me, and it's uh, the fans are very excited and loud, and it ought to be a very fun evening. The rain subsided for now, and hopefully it's a nice, cool night, a great night for football, Matt. Yeah, we got the weather out of the way. Rain's out of the area, at least for now. And uh, these two teams now meeting as the fist bumps all around as we see the coin toss. Uh, the coach matchup, Tiff Daria, Led by Eric Soliday in his 32nd season as a head football coach. He is coaching at his 365th game tonight. He is 221, 150, and 2 in those 32 seasons. He's won two state championships and eight region championships. And on the other side for Frederica, it's Brandon Derrick at his eighth season at the helm of the ninth, coaching at his 88th game. Record of 53 and 34 is one, of course, the state championship and three region championships. And this is the fifth meeting between Frederica and Tift area. And fittingly enough, Brennan, is, is the series is tied 2-2. So this one even more for bragging rights in terms of these two teams meeting once again. Without question, two of the uh, premier teams in the uh, in our area and you know as you said two years ago Brandon Derrick took Frederica to the state championship uh, my son happened to be on that team and so I was at every game and Brandon is a very very energetic coach he'll bring energy tonight to these kids to the fans and you know it ought to be again it ought to be just an absolutely outstanding game Frederica getting ready to break through the banner and take the field in front of the home crowd. And I don't know that this home crowd was expecting to host a playoff game. And they were expecting to win their game last week. But I don't know that anyone had tabbed that they were going to meet Tift area in this game and have another opportunity to host for a right to go to the state championship. Is that a fair assessment? I think you're correct. Uh, you know, Pinewood was certainly the favorite team and uh, that game would have been the one by Pinewood we would have been playing uh, not at home we would have been playing over at Pinewood so yeah it should be hopefully home field advantage for the Knights and something that the fans and cheerleaders and everybody are excited for. Frederica takes the field gearing up last time these two teams played back in 2017 it was Tift area getting the win in the first round of the state playoffs and I think that uh, actually these two teams were supposed to play last year and the game was canceled due to Hurricane Dorian game was canceled and not rescheduled and I think you know obviously it's a testament to these two teams getting to this point but it's also a testament to do it in 2020 with all the parameters and everything around it's a testament to these programs to be able to sacrifice what they have to even get to this game. Well, and it's so exciting for the kids because as you stated, it, it has been a weird year. 2020, everybody <laughs> knows what's going on. 
and all the protocols, everything that's gone into place for these teams to be able to play tonight in itself is really a milestone. And so you, you're exactly right. Kudos to the coaches, to these players, to the parents, to everybody involved. It will be Eli Fritschman putting this one on a tee as we will see the Tift Area Panther offense to get things going here in this 2023A semifinal. Tift Area made the 143-mile drive from Chalua to State Simons this evening. There you see head coach Brandon Derrick gearing up. He said game 88 of his career all here at Frederica. Number 30, Jack Soller back for Tift Area to return the kick. All right, so we have this one on a tee, and we are underway. Fritschman puts a boot into this one in the 3A semifinal underway from a short kick. They pooch this kick, fielded at about the 31-yard line. One of the up men received it. That was Matthew Malone. And so it will be Tift area with decent field position as they try to keep it away from Jack Sadler and uh, potentially starting things off um, the wrong foot. And that we've seen that earlier this year, Frederica giving up a uh, opening kickoff return for a touchdown. Yeah, two weeks ago for sure. But uh, ball at 37 for Tift area, and we'll see what the defense for Frederica can do. Arbort from the shotgun, motion man left to right from the near side, hash will throw it out of the screen pass, completed out to the far sideline, and that's Brock Hammond on the reception, and Hammond picks up good yardage on the first down screen play, just trying to do something simple for Harvard, and it will bring up a second down and short here for the Panthers. Yeah, quick little pass outside, easy pass, little seven yard gains, brings up second and three, second and four. It will be second down at three as Harbert barks out the signals and then takes it himself off the right side. Picks up minimal yardage on the second down run and coming up to lay the lick defensively, Josh Meadows for Frederica. Big senior, six feet, 195 pounds, leading tackler, very good player. No gain on the play, third down and three, just getting things started, the opening offensive series for Tift area. Harbert will operate from the shotgun. Sidecar to his right. Motion man left to right. They go jet motion and keeping it as Harbert, and he'll go right off the right side, picking up the first down and moving the sticks for the first time for the Panthers on the stop Eli Fritschman, but not before Tift area gets a fresh set. And they're going to move into Frederica territory. About the 40. 47 yard line of Frederica. It'll be first down at 10 there, and we've seen what Harbert can do with his legs. Dangerous in the game. Back in week three, here's a first down at 10. Harbert rolls to his right, stops at the play, gets blown dead, and get a first penalty of the ball game. A false start on Tift area, moving five yards back onto the, their own side of the field. Makes it first down at 15 for Tift area. He's like Dylan Harbort. They are not afraid of having him take off and run with the football tonight. Gonna have to keep him at bay tonight. First down at 15 after the penalty. Two sidecars and one motions to the left side. And they end up handing the ball off giving it to Hammond, and he'll plunge forward for a few yards, coming up to make the stop. Ben Carroll, the senior, makes the tackle. It will be second down. Nice job, pursuit to the football there for the Knights. Yeah, may, may have been a gain of one there. Good play on the defensive side of the ball, but you're right with the quarterback. They're, uh, they're able to throw a little bit, get him some open space so he can move. Second down, 14, they gave him one on the carry. Motion right to left for Hammond, and then they motion a receiver from the right side. It's jet motion, getting the carry is 
Sailor, Jack Sailor off the left side, and great containment by the Knight defense. And a nice the job play. there, 57 came is. up count. We will check the penalty. Both coaches mentioned that they feel like these offenses are mere inner images of each other. They know, pretty familiar with what both teams are going to throw at you as the holding call will march this back and make it a second down again and long. Looks like Brandon's Coach Derrick's going to take the penalty, and as you said, it'll make it second down and very long again. But you're right, they are, uh, they're running teams first and passing teams second. Uh, so you, they're going to make you stop the run, and they might open up with some quick passes to really open up the running game. Holding call going to march this one back. 40-yard line, the ball sits. Second, the second and down and long here. <laughs> Shotgun formation for Harbert. Motion man right to left. It's Hammond. Long snap count. Rolling left. Had the pressure immediately. And he goes and gets hit as help arrives. First one there to the football was 33. Jacob Aiken, the junior, applied pressure. And I think Harbert had maybe thought he had a moment to step up in the pocket. That moment did not last long. There it is right here. Great move by Jacob Aiken coming in. Harbert did think he had a step. Jacob closed the gap very quick. Great play by Aiken. It'll be third down and 24 now for Tift area. They are behind the sticks. The opening series of tonight's 3A GISA semifinal. And a shotgun formation, see if Harbert puts the ball in the air for the first time or second time after that opening snap of the ball game is this snap will be blown dead and we have more yellow hankies and it's a delay game penalty now on Tift area, marching back five more and this is not what you want to see if you're Eric Soliday in the beginning parts of all the three snap penalties have really put you behind the eight ball here. Yeah, the quick uh, pass for seven yards, the run for first down, and then penalties since then. It moves them back to the kickoff line of scrimmage, pretty much. Third down, 29. They throw it over the middle. Got his man. He makes the reception going up and coming down with that one. John Adams Copeland makes the reception, picks up some of the lost yardage, but still will be short of the first down sticks. But it's going to make it a manageable fourth down. Here for Tift area. Fourth and nine. Fourth and nine inside Frederick, Frederick territory. They may just decide to go for this. Yeah, I mean you're once you're that, you know, you're you're talking about a fourth down at even 16, 11, 12, even anywhere in that area, you don't you don't want to risk it, but once they got it down to this point, they're gonna call it fourth and eight. They're gonna go for it. 720 here with the first quarter, back to pass. Gonna let it fly down the far sideline. Got his man, but he can't haul it in. Incomplete. Jack Skyler, the intended man on the that's Taylor on the intended reception there. Incomplete. Good coverage for the Knights. You have Rice Riley in coverage, breaking that one up. And really a good pass. Pocket. Uh, Good pass, good defensive play all the way around. So we'll see the Knights on offense now with Thomas Veal. Jordan Triplett in the backfield. It was this Tift area team that had Jordan Triplett's number. He uh, wasn't able to do much, just 35 yards and 11 carries in that loss back in week three, but no one's been able to figure him out since. And Veal will hand it off to Triplett, and Triplett is bottled up on the first play from scrimmage. The defense sliding in for the Panthers is Brock Hammond, fresh off of his running back performance, and now coming up out of the linebacker spot to make the first tackle, second down. And we're going to see a lot of that players both ways tonight, Matt. Coming off of the offense, going straight to defense, and these uh, 
kids really play hard. But that was, they really penetrated on the inside there, and there really was nowhere for Triplett to go. Second down and 12 after the loss of two yards for Triplett. And they'll go shotgun formation once again. Motion and handing it off off the right side. Got a crease getting to the near side boundary and lowering a shoulder. And it's Jaden Rose Scally, the senior, lowering his shoulder and picking up a few. Nice run by Jaden Rose Scally on the jet sweep. Picks up about seven yards. And it's an official timeout. Right, comes in late. Sideline warning. That's a job for the get back coach. As I said, Brandon, uh, Coach Derek gets a little excited sometimes. <laughs> well, that's that's the problem. The get back coach really can't tell the head coach to get back. He's in charge of everybody <laughs> but that one guy. So if it's the head coach, yeah, that, that, that's a sideline warning you got to live with. That's right, and he'll turn around and yell at everybody else, but uh, <laughs> no it's an unnecessary question. penalty if they do it again. Just stay behind the line, and we've got a nice third, third and three, third and three and a half. Yeah, nice 10-yard pickup there on the jet sweep. Jaden Rose Scantley coming out of the slot there and pick it up 10 yards to make this a manageable And now they go back to Triplett off the right side, and Triplett immediately pulled down. Dylan Harbert makes the stop. So it'll be a decision now for uh, Brandon Derrick. They call this, what, fourth and three, fourth and two? Yeah, about fourth and two. We got about a yard, yard and a half there. Great play by Harbert. Uh, to, really wrangled down triplet as he had a little bit of room outside but here we go here's your wildcat with triplet at the quarterback he will take the snap designed wildcat formation they ran a lot of this in the second or the last week's game and triplet battles forward gonna be like close he got the first down they're yep. moving the chain so big first wildcat fourth down conversion triplet. for that's a huge fourth down conversion there for Frederica on their side of the 50-yard line. Brandon Derrick rolling the dice there early in this one. Kind of the same decision that uh, Tift area had, only it was eight yards less. Uh. <laughs> right. Back at quarterback is Thomas Veal. He'll get the snap, and they go jet motion again. And this time, not as much there for Jaded Rose Scally. I like the calls, though, Matt. You know, they're going to open up that outside because that first few plays, they're going to try and bunch in and not let Triplett get inside. That'll open up those inside lanes if they keep pushing it outside. Yeah, it's it's... One of those things where the, the plays that don't go for much set up the plays to go for a lot. Second down and nine after the one-yard pickup. They go motion left to right. Then they'll throw it out here into the flat near side and cannot, did he make that catch? Looks like it was a little bit underthrown there. Yeah, just skipped. Trying to get Jaden Rose off. So they motioned, same motion on that play. But instead of handing it off, they ended up th trying to hit Jaden Rose Scally in the flat and just a little bit underthrown on that one. Good effort by Scally. So we got a big third and nine, and Brandon Derrick's going to take a timeout. Time All right, timeout on the field. We'll take one, two, no score between Frederica. And tipped area, the 3A semifinal comes back right after this. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. 
Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern. 912-638-9090. At Parker's, we understand that education has the power to transform lives. That's why one cent from every gallon of gas we sell on the first Wednesday of the month is donated to local schools. We're proud to be headquartered in Glenn County and giving back to our community. If you want better and you want it for less, h and H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, h has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. h and Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights! So Thomas Veal complete his pass to Mason McGraw on the last play, but short of the first down stick. So the punt unit comes out, and Eli Fritchman punts this ball out at the 25-yard line, and that's where Tiftaria will take over. But we're going to check another penalty flag here. Had a little bit of extracurricular activities between the guys, and it's usually the, uh, the last one that gets caught. So let's see which one was the last one. Assuming dead ball foul, it will stay Tift area ball. And the question is, will it go forward or will it go backward? On sportsmanlike on both sides, it's not going either way. <laughs> it's going to be an offsetting penalty. penalty. Don't even throw a flag. <laughs> that's a good that's a good theory to have yeah. let's really save the time on either one right first down and 10 for the Panthers 25 yard line shotgun formation and keeping it again and going right up the middle is Dylan Harbort not much there in that defensive trenches F.A. all over it, second down. The defensive line did a nice job there, and the linebackers collapsed very quickly. So I don't see, you know, they're going to have to get that ball outside some. They're going to have to throw it a little around a little bit because our, our defensive line is moving a little bit better than their offensive line right now. Second down at 10 after the no-gainer. And they fake the run, and now he'll throw out the pass, and it goes over top of his intended receiver, trying to hook up with John Adam Copeland on the play, and too tall for him, incomplete. Pretty nice design play there, a little kind of fake run, and like you're going to go up the middle, and he had him open, he just overthrew him. It'll be third down now in 10. Yeah, great design on the play third down now for the Panthers and with that 25 yard line shotgun formation once again for Harvard side Carter was right fans on their feet here and a pre-snap penalty will blow this one dead and it's a full Another start false penalty start. against Tiff Daria Tift area has had their fair share of penalties here in the opening quarter. Yeah, they've had, He's hurt them uh, on the offensive some, side. All on the offensive side. They've had a few false starts and then the one big hold that really sabotaged the last drive. And this one didn't help it now, making it third and 16 from inside their own territory, inside the 20. Yeah, they, they don't got a whole lot of room to play with right now. It's third and 15 now from the 20-yard line. Harbert from the gun. Side caught it with his left. 
Design run play right up the middle, and this one gets blown dead, too. Another false start. Brendan, are you seeing who's jumping here? I, I'm not. I, I didn't see anybody on that play. Uh, I don't know if it's just a quick movement from the backs or, or what it may be. I'm watching it here on the replay. Maybe a, a slight move from the slot receiver. Yeah, I, it was not a whole lot, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no. No flinching. So they're, uh, they're inside the 15 now. And these two drives here for Tift area have gone backwards. Third and 20 plus yards. Calling it even 20. Two sidecars back to pass as Harbert throws down the far sideline. Got him in, and he makes the catch down the far sideline. Hauling in the play, Jack Saylor makes a terrific catch, and they pick it all up and then some. Well, you're going to see here Bryce Riley's playing up on the line and gets beat with a great pass. He is a yard behind the receiver, but I'm not sure, quite sure on third and 25 why he was playing man-to-man -man up on the line. Yeah, not the time to play press coverage on a third down at 20 like that. But now it's a first down at 10 for the Panthers as they're in business. Low snap handled. By Harbert, goes off the left side, breaks a tackle, breaks a second tackle. And Harbert's digging inside. Inside as he gets down inside the 35-yard line, of looks. Yeah, he's about the 32, and it was a nice run by Harbert there. First, first down run, 10 yards, and he really cut back against the grain and made a great run. So they'll have the ball right at 32 of Frederica, first down and 10. Yeah, it's first and 10 from there. Shotgun formation again for Harvard. There's two sidecars, two wide receivers out to the far side right. Motion man out of the backfield. They set up the screenplay in the middle of the field, and they got it again. Sailor, who came into the middle of the formation, and that middle screen works to perfection there for the Panthers. With the yeah, that was a very well-designed play. Nicely done by the quarterback. Sailor makes a nice catch and run. So they're going to have first down and 10 at the 19-yard line of Frederica. A drive that looked very bleak just a few plays ago for Tift area. Looking like they're trying to draw first blood of this 3A semifinal. What a first down and 10 from the 19-yard line. Harbor arcs out the signal, swing pass into the flat, got his man, and a quick tackle there by the Knights. They quickly apply pressure. Nice play by Bryce Riley out on that cornerback position and getting through the block. One man out there blocking, if he gets beat, it's, uh, it's a pretty good gain. He got through there and made that tackle. It's a very nice play. That's Hammond on the uh, reception for tipped area. That's a situation where you almost like press coverage because maybe one of your defensive backs can, can jump the route in one of those situations. But nevertheless, it's a second down and 10 after the no-gainer. Uh, coming up on 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Motion again. Designed run play off the right side for Harbert. He's going nowhere. They're going to call him down. First one there to the football was Joshua Elliott. He got help coming across, and that might be the final play of the quarter. See if they'll get another snap off here. Yeah, I believe that's going to be the final play there, and uh, the tipped area side was a little upset that they didn't feel like Harbert was fully down when the whistle blew, but I believe that the Frederica players had him. They just let go. That is the end of one quarter of play, and the Knights and Panthers play to a tie after the first 12 minutes. We come back for quarter number two of the GISA 3A semifinal between Frederica and Tift area. Stick around.
Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org slash summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Welcome back for quarter number two. Frederica Academy and Tiftary Academy going at it for the chance to go to the 3A state championship. Brendan Veal alongside. I'm Matt Fargo. Happy to bring this one to you. You uh, could have made the not trip. quite ready yet. <laughs> They're having a conversation right now. Everybody else is ready. We got the TV timeout is back and we're ready to go. <laughs> well, the Zebras, they're controlling it all. <laughs> Diftaria trying to get back to the state final for the first time since 2002. They've won three state titles, 92, 88, and 84. Of course, Rodriguez, two titles. In 10 seasons, 2018, 2012, let's play quarter number two. This game's still tied as Harbert gets the snap, goes back to pass, looks over down to the far sideline and overshoots an intended man who had broken away from coverage as Carson Peavy, the junior, was the intended receiver. And we got another flag. It's yeah, we're going to get rough in the passer here uh, against Frederica. I tell you what, though, Matt, that was another well-designed route and play there. Yeah. With a good throw, that uh, could have been an easy completion. That uh, is a little scary how open the routes are. And the penalties continue on both sides as the Knights will pick up the personal foul, roughing the passer call. It's going to be fourth down. First down and one, did I hear? Fourth, uh, four, oh, yeah, first down. I'm not sure. They said fourth down, but it's actually a first down on the penalty. <laughs> first down and one. A lot of room in the playbook here. First down and the ball is on the nine yard line. And they just hit it. Stop for a little loss there. Played. Yeah, Harbert was going absolutely nowhere as Will Counts and company collide in on the stop. Great penetration there by the defensive line. You'll see him come in here, and Harbert had nowhere to run the ball. It's going to be uh, probably a loss of one there. The ball's going to be uh, just maybe just outside the 10-yard line now. At the 11, actually. They calling this an end goal situation as they motion out right to left Hammond. Now they'll motion across the formation, jet motion, giving it to Sailor, and Sailor gets tracked down quickly. Again, 57. Will Counts, the senior, on another big stop, tackle. Will Counts. Gain of about three there, but Will Counts did a great job of closing that gap in. It's going to be a third down and uh, about the eight and a half yard line. Defense, 
Third down here for the Panthers. Third and goal from the nine yard line. Shotgun formation for Harbor. Motion right to left again. Taylor. And then Harbor keeps, broke two tackles and plunges forward down inside the five. Yeah, he's going to be down about a two, so this will be uh, decision time for the coach again. Are we going to kick the field goal or are we going to go for it here? After the, uh, they went for it on fourth and long on their last drive, and after the match, they're going to keep the offense out there on a fourth and goal, call it about the three. Fourth down and goal. Big play here early in this ball game in the second quarter. Harbert from the gun. Takes the snap, takes the run, throws into the end zone, caught for the touchdown. Uh, John Adams Copeland makes the catch. Another well designed play. Area touchdown. Well designed play there. It looks like he's going to run the quarterback draw again. Snakes his receiver out and he's wide open. Good throw, good catch, touchdown, tipped area. That hesitation by Harbert gets those linebackers to commit on the run and leaves a lane open for a receiver. Extra point from the left foot of Sailor. And that extra point is good. 9.27 to go in the second. And Tiff Daria has taken a 7 to nothing lead. Drawn first blood in this 3A semifinal. And we'll see it again here on the replay. That hesitation. Able to hook up with John Adam Copeland with a touchdown at distance. Has the lead 7 to nothing over Frederica here in the second quarter. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern, 912-638. 9090. At Parker's, we understand that education has the power to transform lives. That's why one cent from every gallon of gas we sell on the first Wednesday of the month is donated to local schools. We're proud to be headquartered in Glenn County and giving back to our community. For less, H and H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, H and H has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe in-person showroom tour. You deserve better, and you deserve it for less. H and H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederick Academy football. Go Knights! Nice return by Fritchman, sets the Knights up in good field position, and then on the first play from scrimmage, it's a carry by Jaden Rose Scally off the left side, picks up a few, and take a look at the uh, first play here is they use Scally coming on that jet motion again, Brennan. Yeah, great play by number 10, Peavy, there to kind of minimize the gain. Really, no gains. About second and 10 still. So, nice play by the tipped area defense. It's all that nice return by Fritchman in our picture in picture. I feel like we're, we have the CBS picture in picture. Now they got the halfback pass going for the trick play. Got his man, and it's caught. Eli Fritchman makes the reception. Great throw. 
by Jaden Rose Scally, who had just had the carry on the last play, and then he shows his arm strength, hooking up with Richmond for the big play. Well-designed play, right time for it. I tell you, if he could have thrown that ball about five yards further, it would have been a touchdown, but a well-designed yeah. play. Yeah, Frenchman ended up having to play center field on that one, waiting for that one to come down. And if you were a Frederica fan, you had to feel like that ball was in the air for an eternity. First down and 10, they go jet motion, and it's a keep on the Wildcat formation for Jordan Triplett as he goes off the right side and churns forward for another six yards or so. Got a little flag There's on the play, flag which kind of thrown in the area of offensive holding. Chop block. Chop block by Frederica. And Frederica kind of keeping up with the theme of uh, both of these teams, the self-inflicted wounds by way of the penalty. And Tift area was able to come and score despite that. Uh, keep in mind that long conversion after getting hauled down. They had the big play that sprung them loose. Yeah, they're going to need a big one now on this first and uh, 25. They chew, uh, chew a few yards every, every time here, but they need to... They need to get this one down close to the end zone, if not in it. Play action. Veal throwing. Got his man, Bob! Oh, he catch. He couldn't make it. Eli Fritch had an opportunity to make that catch, and he had it about three different times before he did it. This was a very well thrown ball by Thomas Veal and uh, Relay Frischman's going to wish he had this back. It really hits him right in the hands. Just a well thrown ball, well designed play. That's a, that's one that you know if you're Fritch, Frischman, you really want to have that one back. Second down at 21. Thomas Veal, you have to figure they'll put this one back in the air. Or will they try the ground with Jordan Triplett? They will put it in the air again. Shorter pass as they set up the screen play to, to the near side, hooking up with Josh Meadows, just dumping it out. Meadows come across the front for Nation right to left and was wide open. And they get back some of that lost yardage from the penalty to make this a manageable third down. Yeah, nice play there by Josh Meadows. Thomas Phil, just a quick throw. Very nice play to get back. Manageable third and eight now. Third down here for the Knights. Trying to tie things up here in the second. Under seven minutes to go in the second. It's Veal looking near side in and out of the hands. It can play. A lot on that one, and Bryce Riley could not hold it in. Incomplete. Be fourth down here for F.A. Fortunately, he had him open, kind of threw it behind him. Quick throw on an out, just back behind him a little bit. and Don't think it would have been enough for the first down, but it sure would have made this fourth down call a little bit easier. That's one where, if you're a quarterback, it's, it's one more second of setting your feet, being more sturdy with the throw. That one kind of whirly bird on him. Yeah, I agree, Matt. It's uh, just a tiny bit fraction longer, and that, that pass would have had a real opportunity. Fourth down. Knights will go for it. Rolling to the right side is Veal. Going to stop and pop. Let's it fly down the far sideline. Got him in, but his receiver falls down, was taken down. And there is no flag on the play. The ball incomplete. Mason McGraw, the intended receiver, and the home fans won of all plays for that to be the play that a yellow flag comes out in today. I'll tell you what, it was uh, 
It's going to look pretty close here. and <laughs> Definitely uh, the ball was catchable. It's going to be close to being out of the back of the end zone, but you'll see here on the replay, number 30 goes ahead and Oh, my goodness. Him. <laughs> yeah, that, that is the very definition of pass interference. Yeah. Well, Diff Daria gets the break and they get the football. First down at 10, back to work with a 7 0 lead. Motion right to left and a keeper for Harbord. Board broke a couple tackles and falls forward. A yeah, very slippery runner, Harvard is. He uh, broke three or four tackles there and just kind of kept his legs churning and made a nice gain out of something that was going to be nothing. So he gained about four yards and was hit right at the line of scrimmage. Will be second down for Tift area. Second down at six. Keeper again for Harbort. As he'll plunge forward. Picks up maybe two more. Again with a carry. Delon Spencer in on the tackle. The D-man. Third down at eight here coming up here for Tift area, and this one an important third down. Third down. Harbert from the gun. Rolls out left. Pops over. Over top of his antenna receiver. Incomplete. Sailor, the intended receiver on that one, and high fives all around for the defensive strike. Down, As Ben Carroll on coverage, and it's fourth down to three and out for Tift area, and that's exactly what you needed for the Knights of Federica. is away, rolling to start shy of the 45-yard line. So good field position here. For the Frederica Knights will take over first down at 10 and still have that seven-point deficit with five minutes to go here in the second quarter. First down at 10. And the ball, bad snap, and having to go back for it and just take a knee. Heads up play by a freshman as triplet. Ball too tall for him, and he had to go back and fetch it. And was in some trouble, and now it's not a penalty, but it's a miscue for this night's offense that sets them back behind the sticks once again. Second down for the Knights. Rolling here to the near side. Veal throwing. And it could plead. Could not hook up with his intended receiver, Bryce Riley, on the play. Or that uh, bigger part, that was Mason McGraw, the intended receiver. Third down coming up. And partner, uh, Brandon Veal, I can't hear you right now. Oh, 
Third down. Back to pass. In some trouble, and he goes down, sacked on the play. Tift area. Ty Haskins, Ty Haskins the senior, the the drops him. And Veal goes down, it's fourth down, and both teams hand out three and outs. Here in the waiting moments of this second quarter with Tift area having that seven to nothing lead. And the punt unit is now out for Fre Federica. Punt unit is out. Riley on to punt, and he puts the boot into this one. And rolling down, ca caught on the run there, and across the 35, shy of the 40-yard line on the return for Tiftaria was Jack Siller once again. And back to work goes the Tiftaria Panthers that came up on that three and out just uh, moments ago. They get the ball right back thanks to their defensive stand, and... Now the Panthers back to work offensively at that 7 0 lead. 3.22 to go. And quarter number two of this 3A GISA semifinal. Right to go to Mercer University of the state championship next week. Albert go back to work and dive play right up the middle, calling his own number once again. And Lunging forward, able to pick up maybe two to the 40-yard line. It will be second down at eight from there. It's under three minutes to go here in the second. Albert barking out the signals, man in motion to Sailor. Looks right, throws that way, and incomplete, trying to find on a little bit of a skinny post, John Adam Copeland, who has the touchdown reception in the ball game, incomplete. It will be third down coming up for the Panthers. Love doing the motion there with Sailor, and that was kind of the decoy, and really a good ball thrown to Copeland. Uh, Harvard put that one on the money. Copeland was almost surprised by how quickly that ball was uh, potentially catchable and thrown his way. Third down and nine, we'll call it. Motion man once again is Sailor, but he motions into the slot, throwing near side. Ball tipped around and incomplete. And again, they were looking for John Adam Copeland on the play. And the ball gets tipped and then falls harmlessly to the all-natural surface here at Richard Hall Sports Center. And it will be fourth down in the third consecutive three and out between these two teams. Second in a row for Tift area. Punt unit is out once again for the Panthers. Mr. Do It All, Dylan Har Harbert, back to punt. And he's going to jog off as they call a timeout. So, if Dario will punt when we come back, they have a 7 0 lead in the second quarter against Federica. We'll be back after these words. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents. 
with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Back to action is, and off there goes to Triplett. He'll pick up a few as the Frederica offense back to work, trying to tie this thing up before the break. Two minutes coming up here for FA, and they go back to that Wildcat formation where it was Coach Brandon Derrick saying that liked uh, the installation of it. They know that they can go to it. They used it a lot last week. It seemed to be successful, and the freshman stays in it. Motion man left to right of the jet motion. They fake it, and keeping it is triplet. Triplet punches forward, picks up another four yards on the carry, and it will be third down upcoming here for Frederica. Now under a minute, 30 to go in the half. Third down upcoming for the Knights. Looks like the Knights will stay in that Wildcat formation with Triplet. No, it's going to be Veal getting the snap this time. Complete gets passed down inside to the 15 yard line. Only get the pass is Bryce Riley. And Riley's out of bounds under a minute to go. Quick pass from Veal. Simple curl route right inside the 20-yard line. Nice little stiff arm to get him inside the 15 before help arrived for the Panthers. And it is a first down at 10. Just inside the 15-yard line for the Knights. Veal from the gun once again. Handing it off and the play gets blown down. I thought maybe somebody moved early. Flag on the play. And it was the Knights getting caught with their hand in the cookie jar this time on a full start penalty. We'll move them back five, back to the 19 yard line, it seems. Full start on the night, first and 15. Or it will be first down at 15 from there. 54 seconds remain in. The half, Veal back to pass, going to let it fly. Has a man and overshoots his intended receiver. It's Eli Fritchman again, the intended receiver. And in coverage was Dylan Harbert, the quarterback in safety for the Panther defense. Pass goes incomplete, and it will be second down at 15 from there. 49 ticks remain to the half. Second down at 15 now. Veal from the shotgun once again. He'll get the snap, put it into the belly of Perez. Perez broke a tackle. Perez down to the 10-yard line. And Kyle Perez, haven't seen a lot of him in the first half, and they go to him. And the senior delivers with a big gainer. Nothing doing to his right, cutting it back. Back inside, nice inside out move, and just shy of the 10-yard line. Where it will be third down upcoming here for the Knights. 
Fans, let's hear it for our junior cheerleaders, Helen Arline, Hannah Dunlap. They took the time out here with 36 Johnson, seconds left. Greta Johnson, Carter Jules, Mary Lily. Time out taken by Holly Lewis, Frederica, Liner, and the Mitchell, Knights trying to Cammy Pope. Get this Tony one even Turner, here Megan before Bowman, we send it to the break. Jamie Turner, Julie Turner, Mary Helen Deal, and Marissa Viverito, the, uh, your junior cheerleader. Knights have won seven of the last eight games since the uh, loss to Tift area. And out of the timeout, it's Veal. Thinking about throwing and then stepping up into the pocket and going down. And it was Ty Haskins again that got his claws on him. And the clock will wind. 23 seconds to go. Veal will come out. Looks like they're going to try a field goal to end the half on this. They hurry up and bring the field goal unit out. This is Fritchman on to attempt the field goal. 10 seconds to go. They get the snap, the hold, the kick is on its way and that kick is no good and it was all rushed kick is incomplete. and not a situation you want for any kicker there and Panthers will take over. it will be tift area holding and holding a seven to nothing lead barring a miraculous play of the next five seconds they're going to have a seven to nothing lead going into the locker room and tift uh, area will get the football with one final play, but Frederica to just run the kick, kicking unit on the field. Everything rushed in that situation, and, and that's tough to do at a college level. That's tough to do at the professional level even. You see the pros not able to execute that to the highest level that it can be. And a lot to ask a high school kicker to go on and do that. Down to one knee is Dylan Harbord, and it will be Tift area taking into the locker room a seven to nothing lead over the Frederica Academy Knights. It is halftime here at Richard Hole Sports Center on St. Simon's Island. And it is a seven to nothing lead for Tift area. The Panthers have it. We come back with halftime. After these words, you're watching Enrique Academy Knights football. Stick around. Seven and nothing. Panthers lead the Knights at the half. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern. 912-638-9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, H&H &H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, H&H has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. H&H &H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights!
love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you, so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org slash summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern, 912-638. 9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, h and H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, h has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. h and Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights! In these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you, so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org slash summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, 
Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern. 912-638-9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, h, h Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, h, h has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. h, &H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights! In these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. Welcome back. It's halftime. Here are the 3A MI Finals, and it is the Tim Area Panthers leading the Federica Academy Knights 7 0. It started out, defense was the highlight as the swarming Knights were all over. They started out pretty hot and giving fits for this Panther offense. Went for it on fourth down, weren't able to convert the second time. and and they tried to go to the air. That wasn't even working either. Nice pass breakup coming in by Bryce Riley. And then they went back to the air. And that time it worked. That converted a big third down play. Hooking up down the field and finding uh, Jack Skyler. And then they find in the end zone, John Adam Copeland for the touchdown. That makes it seven to nothing. And then it was the trick play for the Knights that got them in scoring distance is Halfback pass, Jaden Rose Scally hooks up with Eli Fritchman. And they got the tight end involved. Pop pass, finding Josh Meadows. That set them up a good scoring position, weren't able to do anything. And the special teams unit sets up 
Federica one more time in good field position. A big block there by Josh Meadows. But the Knights weren't able to convert as they missed a field goal in the final seconds, rushing the kicking unit on. And Eli Fritchman could not put the ball through the post. So that is your score at half. Seven to nothing. And it's Tiff Daria leading Federica Academy here in our semifinal game. When we come back, we'll get you set for the third quarter between the Knights and the Panthers and the right to go to the state title. Stick around the second half. Coming back after these words. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern. 912-638-9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, H&H &H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, H&H &H has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. H&H &H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights! In these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern, 912-638. 9090. Need to eat on the run? 
Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, H and H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, H and H has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe in-person showroom tour. You deserve better, and you deserve it for less. H and H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederick Academy football. Go Knights! In these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you, so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern, 912 638 9090. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. If you want better and you want it for less, H&H Lifestyles is here to deliver. Since 1932, H&H has carried the best brands, provided in-house factory trained service technicians, and offered expert delivery for less than the big box stores. We're appointment only, so call or email us today to schedule your safe, in-person showroom tour. You deserve better and you deserve it for less. H&H Lifestyles is proud to support Frederica Academy football. Go Knights!
in these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simon. Welcome you back. It's time for the second half of this 3A semifinal. GISA as Tiff Daria will kick it back off to Frederica to get things going and a ball rolls out of bounds. So we open the second half much like we saw a lot of the first half with the penalty. Back with Brandon Veal, I'm Matt Fargo, happy to bring you this one. And Brandon, your uh, thoughts on the first half of action as we sort out this penalty? Well, as you talked about, Matt, it really was a uh, defensive battle on both sides. There were some big plays. Yeah, third third down and 25. The period got a big play. And a couple of nice play action passes that got him in the end zone. Of course, Frederica blocks a punt, gets down, has an opportunity to score at the end of the half, and just couldn't make the field goal. So, you know, I, I'm, it was a defensive battle. I'm looking for Triplett to, to break loose here in the second half, figure out a way to get him the ball out in space. Yeah, that's certainly the, the story of the first half because, once again, uh, Tift Area has been able to keep uh, Triplett at bay. And, I mean, you're talking about a guy who has averaged 208 yards a game since that loss to Tift area. They'll go shotgun for Veal to start things off on a first down at 10. Swing it out here near side of the flat, completed pass, got some open room, 50, 45, 40. He's up for a race with near side boundary, 20, 15, 10, five goal and catch a good touchdown for Enrica and house call for Bryce Riley. A simple screen play goes to distance and the first play of half number two is a touchdown for the Knights. Well, that's the pick-me-up we needed, Matt. And uh, just as you said, a great little screen pass out to the side. Bryce Riley, ma Riley makes a couple of great moves and goes all the way into the end zone. First play of the second half. And uh, with the kick here, we can tie this game up. Start new. Colin Vinatero on for the extra point out of the hold of McGraw. And that extra point is good. It didn't take long for the Knights to tie things up. We are knotted up at seven. Here are the 3A semifinal, and you said it, Brendan. Now we got ourselves a ball game all tied up again here at seven after one play of this second half of football. So I think that... Uh, I think well, that, so much um, for the uh, defensive battle there. The uh, defensive battle <laughs> yeah, goes away right. the first play on about, what did they end up being, Matt? Almost a 60-plus uh, yard touchdown throw. They got good field position because the kick out of bounds. And Brandon Derrick, whatever he said in the locker room, that worked. Absolutely. We just got a little bit of rain that just uh, – kind of passed through and it's let back up now that could hamper a little bit of the throwing game, but it's kind of let off now, so it may not be a factor at all. We'll be back for Eli Fritschman to kick this one away for Frederica. Deep man is Sailor once again, but we saw uh, Fritchman kind of pooch kick this one, and he'll do the same. Uh, no, put this one deep. 
And again, from the 25, broke a tackle across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Pretty good return for Saylor. And it will be the Panthers back to work on offense. And they've kind of been hit and missed on the offensive side, too. They've used the big play. And the big play ended up being that big pass play, that third down conversion, and ended up leading to the four-yard touchdown pass, which is... Of course, the Panthers only scored at this point. Yeah, I expect we're still going to see some some runs, some play action pass, but they still want to get that running game established. Harbort from the shotgun. They'll dump it out in the backfield. Great containment by the night defense. He didn't have a shot. Hammond made the catch and got planted for a loss. As first one there was Jacob Aiken, and he got some help from his teammates. Josh Meadows came over along with Ben Carroll. Great pursuit to the football for the guys in gray. Great pursuit, defensive end. Josh just made a, a nice play there and had help from Bryce Riley. Loss of seven on that play. So we'll call it second down at 17. Harbert back to pass, looks here to the near side, just puts the ball up, got a receiver and incomplete overthrew him. Carson Peavy, the intended receiver, had beaten his man uh, down the field on the near sideline. Uh, Baker part in that uh, was uh, intended for, yeah, that was Peavy, the intended man on the play. And uh, Jaden Rose Scally had coverage, and Peavy beat him down the field, ball just overthrown. Peavy did. Again, once again, it's third, uh, second 17. We're up playing on the line. I'm not sure why we're not given a little bit of space there, but that seems to be the go-to throw for Harbert. And he throws it well. It's another well throw. Let's see if Harbert tries it again on another third and 17. He converted to the long third down on that touchdown drive. False imperative play here. And oh. 17 was too easy, right? I'm going to make this a little yeah, bit more go difficult. got to go with a 22. <laughs> <laughs> we had third and 25, and they threw the big play, so it's third and 22. Let's uh, make sure we get some good defense here. They might need to take another penalty then, right? <laughs> Ball's at the 16-yard uh, line. Let's see where the cornerbacks line up here. See if they give them a little space, if they're going to – Get up and jam them and play man to man. Little crazy train in the background. Getting the Knights fans fired up for this big play on third down and 17 here in the third quarter. Just a little over a minute inside of this one and in trouble from the get go is Harvard and he's going to be strung out to the far side boundary. Nowhere to go. Great job, great coverage. Ben Carroll and company, he immediately had pressure, did Harbert. And another big play, Jacob Bates also was there. And the punt unit is out for the Panthers. Yeah, Matt, I'm not going to say Brandon Derrick listened to me, but the defensive backs were a good seven, eight yards off the ball there to, to be able to back up, give them some space for a shorter throw. That's it. I mean, keep everything in front of you on a, on a play like that. Third and long, fourth down and 22. They punt it away, and it's a short pit punt. And here is Fritchman on a big return. And man, I, 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 did that go off the side of his foot, or did that get touched again? They already have a big punt a, in this game. It wasn't a very good kick, and he wanted to get it out of there fast. And Fritchman came up and caught that ball in traffic, made a terrific return, hit the Frederica the ball at the 30 yard line just inside the 30-yard line. Uh, Eli Fritchman with a little bit of a hitch in his giddy-up after that Johnny. return, but seemed like he's okay Let's now. Go, Going to be into the game for this, a first down and 10. Good field position for the Knights. All oh, just inside the 30 at the 29-yard line, and they give it off to Fritchman on the motion, and he stacked up. Now that's a little bit of an extracurricular shove. Are they going to get him a flag for it? No, they're not. No flag there. 
Forward progress had been stopped for a while, but the Panthers stacking up Fritzman. They give them four yards, second down at six now for the Knights, who trailed seven to nothing at halftime, and now they're trying to take the lead for the first time tonight of their just their second possession of the second half. Second and six, shotgun for Veal. The junior sends a man in motion. It's Fritchman. They fake the jet motion and end up giving it off the right side to Kyle Perez. The Perez with a part of the speed off right tackle. Picks up another night first down. And I love the call here. They run a little trap, a little dive trap. Opened up a hole for Perez, and he ran hard there. Very nice design play, Matt. Harbort to tackle, but not before F.A. moves the sticks. A fresh set. First down at 10. Veal checking his wristband here with Perez to his left. Twins out to the far side right. Barking out the signals as Veal. Back to pass. Throws to his near side. Completes the pass at the 10. Stutter step. Stop the go move. Did he stay in? They're calling him out at the one-yard line. And I yes, I think he call. might have been. Yeah, I agree I with you. I think he correct call. I think he touched chalk for sure. Great a great play, move great run. by McGraw, McGraw, but <laughs> take a look at it again. A absolute dime thrown by Veal. It would be this one here. Yeah, right there, the yeah. Officials. That's a great call. So out at about the one and a half. First down and goal for the Knights. They bring in the full package here, and it's triplet, and the Wildcat lowers his shoulder, and the freshman is into the end zone for the Knight touchdown. Lost his helmet, but it won't matter. The Knights have taken the lead for the first time tonight. There is a flag down. It would be Triplett's 20 second touchdown of the season. I believe they were trying to count the number of players Frederica had on the field. Official <laughs> talking over with Kyle Perez. I think this might be coming back. Uh, Brandon Derrick isn't happy about it. And they're going. Brandon Derrick not too happy here with the uh, no, he's not. A player late to get it to 11 players, so he thought. It was just the fact that that, that flag was so late. So they do call. He was still trying to count players. <laughs> so after the penalty, they go triplet, and he'll go inside down to the inside the five. And it will be second and goal from there. And triplet kind of looked to the sideline and rolled his finger saying, give me that one again. Yeah, they just want to run this a few times and get it in the end zone. Triplet off the right side, lowers his shoulder, and he's in. This time he keeps his helmet on, but it's a touchdown for Frederica. And Triplet does notch that touchdown number 22 for the freshman. Well, there was no question uh, the desire to get in the end zone there. Triplet was not going to be stopped and lowered his shoulder and just pulled himself into the end zone. Vinatero puts in the extra point. It's good. 7.51 to play here on the third. And Frederica Academy has the first lead of the night. And it's two well, for the two. Well, the defensive battle. Sorry, so much Matt. for that, right? 
Yeah, the defensive battle is uh, kind of gone awry here, which is a good thing. So proud of the Frederick and Nice. It looked like they came out with a chip on their shoulder and ready to play. And certainly the excitement of that first play in the second half got them motivated and ready to go. Frederica two for two to start the second half. On offensive possessions, both punching in touchdowns. Of course, the first one was a one play drive. That one a little bit more traditional. But it will be, now can the Panthers offense figure themselves out because the Knights certainly up to the challenge on their first offensive possession. Yeah, they had Frederick have played a really nice defensive uh, set of downs on that first possession for tipped area. And eliminated the run. And again, it threw two passes that uh, had an opportunity, but uh, Frederick are really playing nicely on defense and obviously in the second half, nicely on offense. Kick this one away from the 19-yard line on the return for the Panthers, Tyler, or Mason Tyler. And Tyler sets up the Tift area Panther offense. They go back to work, 7.45 to play here in the third quarter of our 3A GISA semifinal. And we saw we were scoreboard watching at halftime. John Millage leading Westfield 14 to nothing at the half. That would be the team, the winner of this game will play in the 3A state championship at Mercer University. The first down at 10 for the Panthers. Fighting themselves, trailing for the first time tonight. And they'll throw and get it here to the near side, hauling in the pass once again. Yeah. It's Jack Staler. Staler up close to the 40-yard line of the pass and catch, and that's what they're going to need to do is get Harburg maybe quick passes across the 40 and be right shy of the 45-yard line. Yeah, Matt, I believe if I was on Frederick of defense, I'd be eyeing number 30 wherever he is, making sure I've got my best man on him to cover him up. They certainly like to, to go to 30 and white right now. First down at 10 for the Panthers. Harbert gets the snap. Designed run play off the right side. Broke a tackle. Ran into his own man. And finally is brought down almost coincidentally by Jordan Triplett. Yeah, Triplett's made the last two plays. The Panthers. Sorry about that. Just saying, Jordan Triplett's made the last two defensive plays, uh, which sometimes is not always good to have your deep safety making those <laughs> plays. Right. And and that's the the catch for this Knights defense because you don't want Harbert to beat you with his arm, but you also don't want to beat him to beat you with his legs. Harbert gets the snap here. And they fake an option play and keeping it as Harbert broke a tackle and by his jersey, was able to be pulled down. Someone in that pile pulled his jersey, and I think he ripped his jersey on that touchdown, potentially saving down. He was going to be off to the races that he broke that out of that scrum. He's hiding behind his players there. You couldn't hardly see him, and uh, luckily one of our guys grabbed him by the, by the jersey there, as you said, and almost stretched it off of him. <laughs> That's... Uh, Gone are the days Third. of tearaway jerseys, right? <laughs> Third, call it two. Harbert from the gun. Design run, calling his own number, and Harbert's going to have the first down. Move the sticks for the Panthers. On the stop for the Knights, 45 at gray. Joshua Elliott, the junior. Needed two, got three. Yeah, that jersey, that jersey's all frayed up at the bottom now. <laughs> you got big number 55, Delon Spencer, playing nose guard. And he's getting double teamed on every play, but he's wreaking havoc in the center of the line for Tift area and it's forcing them to go kind of left and right. Oh, 
Also, Will Thompson amongst that defensive unit causing problems right now, but Panthers still moving the football. They have a first down at 10. Another designed run play for Harbor. Broke another tackle, lowers his shoulder, and finally help arrives to put down Dylan Harbor. Picks up a few you, on that first down carry. And he was hit pretty much uh, at the line of scrimmage. He does a great job of breaking those initial tackles. Oh, his yards uh, after contact are definitely where he's been most successful. And he's a very, very slippery runner. And physical, not, af not afraid to take the big hits. And you don't see that every day anymore from the quarterback position. You're right. Shotgun formation again for Harbor. Side Carter was right as Tyler. Going to throw a slant route. Too tall for his intended receiver. Trying to hook up with Carson Peavy on the plane. It's incomplete. It looked like Eli <laughs> Fritchman had, a, had an opportunity to come in there and try and get that ball. Though a little bit too high for him. But nice play on defense there. At least he thought so. He was pretty frustrated about it. Oh, yeah. A little bit to the right. That could have been... First turnover of the ball game. Third down and seven for the Panthers. Harbour sends a man in motion. That's Mason Tyler back to pass. He'll throw over the middle of the field and That's skip his pass too short to Carson Peavy incomplete. They ran number That's seven out down. in motion there and uh, ran him to the left out in motion. And really, they had the left side of the defense confused on who was going to be covering who. <laughs> it's fourth down and seven now. Yeah. And the Panthers going will go again for here. Fourth and seven. About the 43-yard line. Arcing out the signals is Harbor. Man in motion left to right. Peavy rolling here to the right side. Stopping, throwing back to the left. Got his man. Jump ball. That ball is incomplete. Incomplete. Turnover on downs, and it's Knights football. Bryce Riley made a very nice recovery there on that play. He was beat on a misdirection and was able, the ball was thrown so high, he was able to get back to the uh, and break up that pass on a very nice play. Great recovery indeed because for a second, wow, I think Brock Hammond had that one for a second and then that one hit the ground. A very close play there. That would have been a that first down. That would have been course. another wild conversion for Diff areas back to work for triplet in the offense and now this complexion of this game if if the knights could punch one in here it, this one has kind of been turned totally on its head from where we were at the break yeah and you just feel that huge momentum shift again with that first play of the second half and frederica just feeling the momentum here on defense but also on offense and so if they can get one in and here, as you said, it would really be a dagger. Veal from the gun. High snap was able to pull it down, but flags blow the play dead anyway. And it's a false start penalty against the Knights. Will be yeah, second down I believe 15 now. Jordan Triplett uh, wanted to get going a little quick there. Yeah, sometimes Lady Mo gets you a little bit over eager, over zealous. <laughs> so they got second and 15 here. If they could get half of that back, make a much uh, very manageable third down. Second down at 15, it is. Veal. Motion man, it looks like they're running the same play. They end up putting it in the stomach of Triplett, and Triplett goes right up the middle and does pick most of that lost penalty yardage right up and then some. 
Yeah, they got about the seven or eh, almost eight yards there, and so it makes it a very manageable, almost nine yards, very manageable third and six here. Big third down here in the third quarter, 3-12 to play. Clock churns on this, they'll call it a third and six. Pitch to the right. Great play call. First time we've seen that sweep to the right side, and it's a full start penalty that will negate the play. He's avoided. Triplett has some open pastures to run through there. He really did, Matt. As you said, that was the first time we've seen that pitch out to the wide side, and it looked like Triplett had a lot of room to run. Interesting with Veal taking the snap and going back towards his left with the ball, and then ended up pitching it back to the right side. Confused the defense even more. Here's a now third and 11 with the sidecar triplet back to pass Veal. Veal had some pressure, was able to put it up in the air. Jump ball, got his man! And again, wow. it's Eli Fritchman coming down with the football. What? Eli Fritchman Veal, runs right underneath it. Very nice pass, very patient pass by Thomas Veal. And Eli Fritchman makes the grab. What a great play. I thought that that was going to end up being a jump ball between two defensive backs and Fritchman. But Veal throws a dime that goes right over the two defensive backs and right into the bread basket of Fritchman for what was a really routine play. That was a terrific throw by Veal. Terrific throw, and he gave himself one step there to get his balance and make a great throw. First down and 10. Back to the ground and back to number four, Jordan Triplett. As he'll churn forward, picks up a few on the first down carry. It's second down from there. Just short of the 10. Yeah, Matt, I'd love to see that uh, pitch wide again and see what can happen with that with Triplett running that. Or Kyle Perez. Yeah, Perez hasn't carried the rock that much tonight, but when he has, he's been very successful. He's got Triplett go. uh, taking, the, taking the pitch, uh, the snap here again. Yeah, Wildcat back to the Wildcat. Triplett going to look to throw. He will, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Picked off in the end zone by Jack Saylor and Tiff Daria lives to fight another down. They get the big stop and it's Panthers football as the Knights try to go with more trickery and it's the Panthers that come up with the football. Not a bad setup for the play. You just had to uh, say Sailor was the only one back, kind of covering two people and kind of played center field and was able to make that interception pretty easily. Yeah, you, that, that ball just needs to be a little bit deeper as Sailor high points the football and back to work goes the Panther offense and they go right back to their bread and butter man, Dylan Harport, and he picks up great first down yardage. Boy, he's been there go-to guy tonight in all season. He will, he will sleep well on the uh, ride back tonight, no <laughs> question. He had a pretty nice uh, night. The last time these two teams met, 14 carries for 72 yards on the ground to go along with over 200 yards through the air. It's really been a reverse situation here in this meeting on a first down at 10. Guess who? Harport plunges forward, picks up two on the first down carry. Host of gray jerseys in on that stop. Second and yeah, eight just, after. Uh, straight up the middle on that play and not much trickeration at all. Just straight up the middle and our big, our big nose guard, DeLon, is out right now. Uh, he's on the sideline. It looks to be catching a little wind right now. So we've got a new nose guard in maybe that's why they were trying to attack the center of the of the line that's a great point 
Harport from the gun on a second down at eight play. He'll throw, got his man on a skinny post and bouncing off a of would-be tackler is Carson Beebe. And Beebe's gonna pick up another Panther first down. Really nice throw there by Harport. Kind of got it, had to get it up over the defensive tackle and made a nice throw, nice catch there. And that's the end of Simple the play there. That's the end of the third quarter. With 14, to seven. 14 to 7. 14 to 7. It's Federica leading. If area, the Panthers trail the Knights after three. We go to the fourth chapter of this one. With the Knights leading 14 to 7 for the right to go to the state championship. We'll step aside and we'll come back the fourth chapter. 12 minutes separates the Knights from a trip to the state title. Come back with us for quarter number four after these words. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. In these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. Fourth quarter action here. Live from Richard Holt Sports Center in State Simons Island. It is carrying on a third and two. Harport picks up another first down for the Panthers. Trying to tie things up here in the fourth quarter and he picks up a first down. Yeah, just a great run. Just staying behind his blockers and staying low. Just knew he had to only get two yards. Picks up about five. First down at 10 for the Knights. We'll set up shop first down at 10 with that shotgun formation once again for Harport. He'll throw to the right side. Got his man on the reception. All it in another pass. It's Peavy. Arson Peavy's been a man he's like to look to here in this second half. Coming out of that spot. Another nice. Yeah, another nice throw and catch on the slant. Picks up about five yards. And that's what 
You've seen the Panthers kind of change their offensive sequence here. A lot more quick passes for Dylan Harport. On a second down at five, he'll run it, shake off a tackle and pick up another first down. First down, Panthers, steady dose to two in white, whether it's with his legs or his arm. It's going to be really close to that first down, Matt. Depending on the spot here. Yep, they're going to give him the first down. Nice run again by Harport. I tell you, he got hit again at the line of scrimmage, breaks that first tackle and got five more yards. First down at 10 for the Panthers. Who trail 14 to seven here in the fourth quarter. Is GISA 3A semifinal. Gift area trying to knock things up. First down at 10. Back to pass. Looks near side. Just puts the ball up and overthrows. His intended receiver incomplete. Sailor, the intended receiver, and it's been Sailor against Fritchman all night long, whether one's on the offensive side or the other. They've been going at it all night. Yeah, that was a uh, not the best throw that Harport's thrown tonight. It was not, really an uncatchable ball, but nice coverage by Bryce Riley on that play. Second down at 10. For the Panthers. Motion man left to right is Sailor. Low snap handled by Harport. And Harport is going to be stacked up. Nice extens uh, defensive stand there by F.A. First one to get there, 57 will count. Yeah, that was a pretty nice gang tackle there. Harport couldn't break the first tackle because he had about four guys trying to get him at that point. So, <laughs> nice stop. That's the way to stop him, right? Yeah, he gets more than one there might be the way to do it. Let's uh, get the defensive backs here to make a nice play on this third down, and I guess they'll probably go for it on fourth. So, you got two plays to stop here. Block winds at 830. 14-7, to seven, third down and 10. Panthers from the gun once again, Harbort, and this is going to be blown dead. And what has happened many times throughout tonight is a pre-snap false start penalty in a critical situation, and it happens again here. Falstart. Yeah, it, uh, Harbort was not quite ready for that snap. I don't know if that false start might have been on the center, but uh, yeah. it's going to put him in a tough spot here, third and 15. It's where you need the... The drama club skills. Just, I knew it was coming. <laughs> Try to fold nice the Nice job of catching. Officials. He did. Third down and 15. Back to pass. Harbord going to throw. Got his man. Got the first down. And they move the sticks again. And it's John Adam Copeland who has the touchdown reception, making another big catch for the Panthers. And that's good for a first down for the now, Panthers. Between Copeland and Sailor, they are up. Uh, Gathering some yardage tonight, catching the ball. It's a nice little long slant. It got him about uh, 20 yards there. First down. Well, the Panthers, they could still get a first down as they are sniff of the goal line here, and they go back to the running game, and Harbord is stacked up again. And I think Federica has committed to stopping two on the ground here. He, he's going to have to put it in the air. Yeah, it, uh, they, you know, he's, all of his runs pretty much on this set of series, this series have been inside the tackles. He really hadn't gone outside anywhere yet, so might be able to see a little bit of that, or I'm sure they've been very productive throwing the ball. That was Garrett Squire on the stop. Second down at 10 after the no-gainer. Harbour gets the snap. Fade route, corner of the end zone, jump ball. He came down with it as he inbounds. They say no. I tell you what, he made a great catch, and it looked like the first thing to hit the ground was the ball out yep. of bounds, but he had it in his hands. What a great catch that was. Nice throw, nice catch, just a little bit out. 
That was a great throw where only your receiver has a shot at making that catch. And Sailor almost made a highlight real catch to be an extra point away from tying this thing. Third down at 10 once again. What will they have here on third down? It's that slant route and it's nearly picked off, but it's broken up. Jordan, Jordan triplet on the coverage. What a great play. Jordan Triplett, it's gonna, ball's gonna hit his hands pretty hard here. Almost surprised him. Ten here, Matt. It's Big one here with just over six minutes to go. You you figure and you you figure you're gonna go back to your bread and butter plays. They've loved those skinny posts. Potentially a fade route at a timeout has been called. By Tiftary, I believe. I, Brandon Derrick might have called that one. He didn't like the setup on defense. That's not a bad timeout. I mean, this is a huge play of the ball game. A fourth down at 10, you're up by seven. Give an opportunity to get the ball back and at the very least milk some clock. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that's a good timeout. Hopefully, you know, we're talking about the slant routes they've been throwing. It's basically been slant, slant routes and fade routes. Yep. The guys can be ready for it. Hopefully, uh, we've got basically playing two safeties deep now with Triplett and Frenchman. Those guys are going to have to be pretty critical right here to stop these stop this pass. Well, the last time these two teams met, it was that first round state playoff game in 2017. And here's a fourth down and 10 play, and it's a penalty. This is going to get blown dead. It'll be fourth and 15 now. Well, the way that this game has gone, it's really not a tiffed third or fourth down conversion unless it has to be behind the sticks. That's pretty much been the rule. I thought Brandon, man, he might want to decline that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> keep, keep it inside the stick. Right. Fourth and 15 now, 639 to play in the ball game. Enrico with a 14 to 7 lead. Tiff trying to keep this possession alive. They'll have to convert a fourth and 15. Harbord gets the snap. It's low. He handles it. He'll throw. It's a fade route, really a jump ball, and he overthrows everyone. He could play great coverage. No flags on the play, and it's a turnover on downs once again. The Frederica Knights have slammed the door shut on the Panther offense once again. They've been empty in this second half. Yeah, it was uncharacteristic of Harbord there. You know, he threw that ball out of bounds on fourth fourth down and didn't even give his guys a chance to catch it. He's been pretty good throwing the ball tonight. I was a little surprised that he didn't give his guys a chance there, but Frederick first down. We're talking about that 2017 game, they went to Sailor on that play. Sailor had the last points in that game and he kicked the extra point in that game. And back to the ground goes Jordan Triplett and that night's offense is the clock becomes the boys at Gray's friend. Yeah, I tell you, that was that little pitch play that we hadn't seen that went out to Triplett for a nice eight eight yard gain there, Matt. Kind of gave them a little more on that as they go back to the ground on second down. It's short back to Triplett, and he picks up the first down for the Knights. Move the sticks. Move the sticks and run the clock. First down. First clock uh, will stop only momentarily while the chain's set. And this, of course, bodes well for F.A. This goes right into their game plan. They love running the football, having a methodical drive. Really don't even need to score here. You just need to, of course, you'd love to, but you need to keep that clock moving. 
Back to the ground, back to triplet, left side, triplet, a spin move, first down and more for number four. Move the six again for FA. Just a great run by Jordan Triplett, and Matt, this is what you see from him throughout the year. He just gets stronger as the game goes on, and so, you know, give him the ball. Let's see what he can do. Another 10-yard, 12, 15-yard run there. It's exciting for Knights fans to know that they got another three years at number four. Yeah, no kidding. It's hard to believe this uh, young man is a freshman. He's a big kid. Uh, yeah, he's six feet, 190 pounds. He's... Uh, and he's fast and shifty. They shift it out to the right side, pitch it that way. Tiff area has that one sniffed out. Gain of four. Picked up four, though, for four, and looks like a Panther is down. No, no it's a night. Yeah, it looks like a night. Thought it was uh, Marvin Triplett to start with, but he's up. Will Thompson's down. The senior athletic training staff tending to him. Oh, we'll hope the, uh, the best for Will Thompson for sure. But, you know, again, Matt, that was that... Nice little pitch play. Well, as they uh, tend to uh, Thompson, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. Need to eat on the run? Then head inside and grab some tasty sandwiches or some snacks. It's quick and easy at Parker's. And don't forget we have any size fountain drink for only 99 cents with flavor shots and our famous chewy ice. Paige Aiken is a Frederica football dad and an experienced realtor of luxury homes on St. Simons and Sea Island. With over 30 years of real estate experience, Paige is an expert at evaluating the market and consulting with clients in meeting their goals, both financially and personally. He consistently achieves top sales results and values relationships. Paige Aiken has the professional expertise and local knowledge to make your dreams of owning a coastal home a reality. Contact him today. You love the game, but you don't love the pain. From the moment an injury sidelines you, turn to the experts at Summit Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Surgery. Our winning team of physicians and orthopedic surgeons will design a treatment plan just for you so you can get back in the game quickly and safely. To play your best, you need to work with the best. Visit sghs.org summit or call 912-466-7340 to schedule your appointment. In these uncertain times, we all need to find ways for our communities to come together and to work as a team. And what better way to do that than supporting our student athletes? I'm Al McKinnon, CEO of South Coast Bank, and we are proud supporters of Glen County Athletics. As your local hometown bank, we invite you to enjoy the games. Be safe and God bless. Off the uh, delay gate penalty, it's a second down and 17 right now for the Knights. Churning this clock under four minutes to go. Veal gets the snap. He's going to throw it into traffic, but going up and, oh, he just couldn't come up with it. In and out of the hands. Could not haul that one in for Josh Meadows. It could play. Yeah, Meadows had a good opportunity at it. He fought for the ball and just couldn't hold on to it there. Watch this replay. Third down night. Pretty good throw. Pretty good defense. Yeah, put there a, too. just enough touch on that one. Let Meadows make a catch on it. But 
Just couldn't haul it in. So big third down here, third and 16 for Frederica, who has that 14 to 7 advantage. They have a big third down conversion in them. Veal operating out of the pistol. Faking to triplet. Veal keeps it. Looking to run. He's going to take off and run, break a couple tackles, and dive forward towards that 35 yard line. And there's more flags down. Check those. Going to have a holding on Frederica there. It'll be interesting if they take the penalty or uh, make them punt it here. Oh, a false start. It's a false start, so no choice. Wow. It's a, it's a pretty pretty late false start penalty. The whole play happened. False start. I think that might be a legal, legal procedure call. That, that uh, slot receiver, did, Mason McGraw, did move a slight bit early there. Third and 22. Back to pass, Veal rolls to the right. Pressure, oh, the ground, and it's still loose. Tiff said they have it, the officials conferring. No side for the officials yet. They it give it to him. Gift football. And the Thomas Panthers Field will have stuck. another shot at this. Thomas Field just uh, was trying to elude a defender, and the defender stuck his hand out and just knocked that ball right out of his hand. You see it here. It just swats it at the right time, right place from Brock Hammond, the senior. I think it was Hammond to get underneath that power and recover it as well. So they're going to give Tiftaria a real opportunity here. Let's see what the Frederick defense can bow up. First down at 10 for the Panthers. 319 to play in a seven point game to go to the state finals. Off to the right side, Harbour. He's bottled up, brought down to the backfield. Once again, Will counts. Squire also in on the stop. Second down, and they're going to lose two on there on the hardboard yeah, big run. DeLon, big DeLon Spencer got in there on that one. He's back in the game now. It looks like he got his rest and he's ready to play. No so. Nice defensive first play there. You got to believe they're going to come back to the slant at some point. Second down at 11 after the loss of one, they mark it. Back to pass, Harbour going to throw, tipped and incomplete. Again, trying to go towards Siller on that far sideline. A little too tall for number 30, yeah. and it goes incomplete. It was really a well-designed play, just a little too tall, as you said. They had him open. You'll see it here, well-designed, just a little too high. Right at the sticks, too. They gave him a fresh set of downs. He's dead. Faced with the third down at 10. The Knights defense trying to buckle down here. 38 to play on a third and down at 11. Back to pass. Harbord going to throw it. And again, they go back to the same play. And this time, that one had way too much on it. Again, trying to find Sailor and complete fourth down. It really looked like there was some confusion in the patterns from the, the uh, wide receivers. They were running, trying to run the slant, but both guys ended up in the same place. So, big fourth down here. It will be fourth down and 2.33 to go. Tift area's chances dwindling. They can't convert this. Fourth down at 11. Harbour gets the snap. Back to pass. Going to look down the near sideline and overshoot his intended man. Incomplete. No flags on the field. And another turnover on downs provided by the Knights defense. Well, credit the Knights defense there with four really good defensive plays. 
Harcourt threw a nice ball there, just a little overthrown to his uh, receiver, Peavy. And just a really, really nice job by the Frederica defense. They have stepped up every time they've needed to to this point. And it's a first down and 10 for the Knights offense. And they're going to go to the Wildcat formation and triple it, and the play gets blown dead because it's not a possession without a full start penalty tonight. Hey, seems like that's the case, especially in the second half here. It's, uh, no, this is a legal motion. Time. Okay. <laughs> Learning a different it sign language today. <laughs> First down at 15 now for the Knights. An illegal, illegal shift, shift, and everybody in the place knows they're just going to run the ball. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, what the offensive line loves. First down at 15 for the Knights. 2.26 to play. Triplet off the right side, following blockers. And able to carry forward, picks up a few on first down. Trying to pick up some of that lost penalty yardage. And so we got timeout. We've been seeing a lot. Area. Tiff's going to take a timeout, and they're trying to figure things out because they're trying to figure out number four. We've seen a lot of number four tonight, especially in the second half. A freshman has been all over getting an opportunity there on the sweep and triplet has impressed all night long. He's he mentioned 22 touchdowns. There it was 22nd touchdown in his freshman season. Been really fun to watch number four tonight and all season if you're a Knights fan. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as he said, he just gets stronger as the night goes on. So you got to figure we're going to see uh, at least two more runs from Triplet here before uh, we may have to punt the ball. This 217 left in this fourth quarter in the game. Second down and 15 out of the timeout. And it's again, no surprise here. Triplet going right up the middle. Picking up a few more and another timeout. Another timeout from Tift area and Triplet picked up a nice five, five yards there. So it makes it a manageable a third down and six. And fans, it's finally time Big third down coming up. And really, with Tift area electing to use the timeout early on here, and, you know, if you're playing hindsight, your head coach, Eric Soliday, you, you got to figure that you, you had your opportunity. You got the big turnover. You got great field position and weren't able to convert on that last offensive series. you really trying to to grasp at anything you can right now to get this ball back and you still have time if you could get a stop here. Absolutely. Yeah, they triplet did a nice job on the last two plays as the tipped area Panthers are definitely going to try and get that ball and he's just covering it up and making sure he didn't let let go of that in any way, shape, or form. Third and six. Now timeout triplet. from Rica. <laughs> and we play Back and forth the timeouts as the Knights take one. And of course, Tift area is trying to not have, have this happen for the third straight season. They've lost in the semifinals the last two seasons. It was to John Millage Academy the last two years. They've gotten to the semifinals and haven't been able to find their way to the state title since 2002. Of course, the Knights trying to return to the title game for the second time in three seasons. Yeah, they just got uh, two, two minutes and 11 seconds here to weather the storm. 
They'll be making a trip to Macon next weekend. But first things first, they need to take care of the ball here. Six yards for a first down, but more importantly, make sure they take care of the ball here. Or a triplet is the sidecar. Now he's going to operate as the uh, Wildcat formation. To his left is Perez. Design run play. He goes off the right side. Stop and go move for the first down. Will not be denied. Wow. Jordan Triplett picks up a Knights first down. I'll tell you what, Matt, for the first time tonight on the Wildcat, they faked everything going left and Triplett went back to the right. And it was pretty wide open for him to get that six, seven yards there. Watch this play. Everybody goes left and then he comes back right. What a nicely designed play by Coach Derrick. And a great and then run. the third and fourth efforts to take a couple Panthers for a ride at other four yards. Yeah, if you don't think that freshman's a strong young man, that uh, last play proves it right there. <laughs> Injured night down, I believe, is Sam Norris. Norris is getting tended to, and we'll take a break. 14 to seven. Federica tried to punch her ticket to the state title game. Dr. Zachary Powell practices family cosmetic and implant dentistry and enjoys treating patients of all ages. A lifelong Georgian, Dr. Powell has provided dental care to generations of families throughout the great state of Georgia for over 20 years. Rest assured that your safety and care are our top priorities. We are always welcoming new smiles to our practice. Call us today to schedule a personalized time with Dr. Powell and our team at Dentistry in Redfern. 912-638-9090. At Parker's, we understand that education has the power to transform lives. That's why one cent from every gallon of gas we sell on the first Wednesday of the month is donated to local schools. We're proud to be headquartered in Glenn County and giving back to our community. Welcome you back. It's back to work for number four. And Gray and Gordon Triplett punches forward for a couple on that first down plunge. But more importantly, the clock continues to wind if you're a Knights fan. Yeah, and again, good ball handling, making sure that he's covering up that ball so it can't get ripped out here. That's the most important thing. Basically, Tiff Derrick can stop the clock one more time, and that's it. Under a minute to go. Triplet again off the right side. Triplet breaks another tackle, and he picks up another first down, and that's going to be it. With the first down. Yeah, that'll do it there. Another great run by Josh Tri Jordan Triplet. Next Triplet one, bouncing off tacklers. Wow. Yeah. Just gets stronger as it goes. I mean, obviously, this program's history is young. Just the 10th year of Frederica Knights football, and Jordan Triplet could be a special special player that we're talking about long before long after four years or so this clock is going to wind down and how about the story of this night's team that's going to punch their ticket to a state title game yeah, it's just a it's a great story, and Matt, as you alluded to very, very early in the broadcast, just the fact of being here and playing tonight in this uh, COVID era, 2020, and every, 
everything that's gone into it is just means so much more for these kids and these parents and the cheerleaders. Just a very, very special night for the uh, Frederica family. Fans, a reminder, please stay off the field after the game. And also, congratulations to the Tift Area Panthers on a great year. Yeah, great story. I mean, both of these teams, the underdogs in the last round, upsetting. Tift upsets Pinewood, the number two seed. Frederica upsets the three seed at Bullock Academy. And down to a knee. What are you doing next weekend? Well, if you're a Knights <laughs> fan, you are going to the state title game at Mercer University next Friday night. Congratulations. Frederica punches their nice. ticket. Yes, indeed. 14 to 7, the final score. And the fireworks shooting off to be seen all around the island tonight. 14 to 7, the final score as an impressive ball game. And really, uh, I got to say, the second half was the difference. I mean, they, they came out in the second half and they wouldn't be denied. Well, this, I, the first play of the second half, you got a 60 yard touchdown pass. It just really changed the dynamics of the game very quickly. It put Frederica with all the momentum and, and they were able to go right back down again and score on the next possession. And you and I we thought like that they might run away with it, but credit tipped here. area. They came back, they played great defense. They got an interception in the end zone to kind of slow down that pro, uh, what Frederica was doing. And you know, they made a great game of it. Have a great weekend, drive safely. Last we saw, it was John Millage leading Westfield. Will it be the number one seeded John Millage take it on your Frederica Knights next Friday? But that was the story here tonight. They are going back to the state championship for the second time in three years. The Knights are going back. Thanks so much for watching this presentation of Knights football. And thanks to our great production crew for putting on a terrific production tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you're a Knights fan, you most certainly did. Thanks to my partner, Brandon Veal. And for all of us here with Knights Football, I'm Matt Fargo saying again the final score, 14 to 7. Federica is headed to the state title game. They now tipped area. Good night, everybody. We'll talk to you next time.